This is the F-Fly Caddis. It's basically a, an F-Fly variant. Um, the hook in the vise is a size 14 dry um, standard hook. I don't use a uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't use a long shank or anything. Just a light wear down eye hook. Black thread. I'm uh, coming on about two eyes width behind the, the eye itself. I just use that as a measure. Um, I don't want to get too close to the the eye. I take the thread back to the end of the straight portion to start the bend. Choose a. These are um, mallard a, a CDC feathers, and I've got to choose one of the larger feathers. I'm looking for this shape. I'm looking for this shape. Um, it's a fairly long feather, but the the point is that it's got. When I bundle it to the tip. I've got most of the most of the fibres together, and I'm actually going to get rid of some of these feathers at the base. I don't need them. And the way I did it in the magazine was I bundled it and wrapped two loose wraps, and you hold the thread, some tension on the thread, and just pull gently. Tip. It's just been held by the tip. You wrap forward over that touching turns. Back to that position there. The original F fly, the body was tying thread, it didn't have anything else. This is just gilding all the I suppose. It's, it's building up the body a wee bit. Um, now I give this a twist, about one full wrap, and that's just to control the fibres, it's just to get the fibres together. Um, I'm not using it to cord the, um, the feather, and then when I wrap it, the, the wraps are next to each other. Um, so I'm looking for a, it's like a herald body really, it's, it's a, a slim slightly fuzzy body. I wrap forward to the thread and tie off. What you'll find is CDC is a it's an oily material so it's a wee bit slippery but more than anything it, it it's surprisingly bulky. Um, so I'm going to tie that down and trim away the the waist end. Now you can see these fibres sticking out, I'm going to trim some of those as well. Cut my thread if possible. I'm trimming those because they just don't do anything. Um, the next job is to take three... I'm taking three fairly substantial feathers. Um, if you take smaller feathers, I might use four. Um, I'm using it to form a bundle. There's my bundle of feathers, and I line up the tips. They're all curved in the same way, and the tips are near enough aligned. Now, I want them to sit. See that this is fluffy stuff. I want them to sit that way, and I'll prepare them by ripping off some of the stuff at the base. I don't use that. Don't need that. Now I can put this in and pull it through. I find that's an imprecise way. It tends to pull the thread. So what I tend to do is bundle the fibers back until I get the length of wing that I want and then 
pinch them down on top of the hook shank and pinch and loop them in place. And that'll do. Um, if you're not happy with a wing, simply undo it and repeat the process. Very often what you find is that because you've tied a feather in, it becomes easier to tie in the second time. So bundle it, I've got it pinched, a couple of tight turns of thread, work it so it's on top of the hook shank. I want the wing, I like the wing to be slightly longer than the hook shank, comes off the bend of the hook. Um, and flat down onto the hook shank. I want it above the hook but I want it flat along the, 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 the hook shank. The wing is the the wing is, is really what keeps this fly on the surface of the water. The body is um, CVC but it's not enough um, to make the fly float really. Now you'll see that I'm getting close to the eye here um, when you cut these you'll find that there's a surprising amount of bulk um, in that bundle. Um, take the thread back towards the wing. So I come in and I'll try to... My scissors are flat but the wing, the, the stubs are pulled straight up so when I cut the, the effect is that these fibers are at an angle so I can take my thread and bundle them down and in the original F fly I would simply varnish that um, to add a level of I don't know, to add something anyway um, I'm taking a little hair's ear dubbing this is a uh, this is a hair's ear and a dubbing rake and if I can get to the other camera a few passes of the dubbing rake and I've got a wee, mount, a wee bit of dubbing and that's all I need um, it's sparse short staple quite spiky stuff then wind it forwards. Hold everything back. Messy. I don't, I don't um, brush out that um, I'm looking for the dubbing to be spiky enough um, to do the job I want it to do. Um, if you don't have hairs here, hairs mask, um, a rabbit, squirrel, any of these sorts of natural uh, colour dubbings will do fine. Um, I think they're a, a staple, I think they're, they're something you ought to have in your dubbing, um, in your box of dubbings. So that's it. Now I'll give the, I'm not going to try and form a big, a highly glossy, polished head, I'm just going to put a drop of varnish onto the, the thread and use that to lock the thread, seal the thread. That's it.